We are about to begin the funeral service for Mrs. Lorraine Brotman. I would ask any of you who have a cellular phone to please turn it to the off position. Additionally, I would ask you to please make sure that whatever masks you're wearing, that you have them above your nose. Thank you very, very much. Officiating our service today will be Rabbi Jeremy Fine of Congregation B'nai Tikva. Jewish people respond to death with three words of blessing. Baruch Dayan Ha'emet. Praise be the judge of truth. Adonai Natan, Varonai Lakach, Yehi Sham Adonai Mivorach. God has given and God has taken. And through it all, we continue to remember Lorraine's life, her name, and her legacy. Lorraine was preceded in death by her parents, B and Jack, her sibling, Monty, and her husband of 39 years, Norman, and survived by her children, Marcy, Edward, Randy, and Mitch, her grandchildren, Stephanie, Michael, Joshua, Emily, Jacqueline, Andy, and Rob, and her great-grandchildren, Lila, Nolan, Isaac, and Ryan. In the words of Ecclesiastes, a season is set for everything, a time for every experience under the heaven, a time for birthing and a time for dying, a time for dancing and a time for wailing, a time for speaking and a time for silence, a time for seeking and a time for losing. As is the Jewish tradition, we turn to Psalms for words of comfort and blessing. Psalm 23. Mizmor le David, Adonai roi lo achsar, bit no deshe yar bitseni, ame menuchot yancheni. Nafshi ye shovev yancheni bemagli tzedek lamanchimo. Gam ki elech begeit salmavet lo ira ra ki ata imadi. Shiftacha mi shantacha hema yachamuni. Ta aroch lefanai shochan neget sororai. Tishanta b'shem en roshi kosi rivaya. Achto v'achesed yirdefuni kol yeme chaya. V'shavti b'veit Adonai l'orech yamim. The Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. Makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads beside me the still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in straight paths for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For art thou with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Proverbs 31. Eshet chayo miimsav rachok mimi michra. Batach balev bala vashala lo yechsar. Gemaltu tov alora kol yeme chaya. What a precious find is an Eshet Chayal, a woman of valor. Her worth is far beyond rubies. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a God revering woman is much to be praised. Extol her for the fruit of her hand. Wherever people gather her deeds, speak her praise. To know Lorraine was to know how much she cared and cherished her grandchildren. I'm going to call them all right up now to say a few words about their beloved grandmother. What do I say about one of the best people I, 
or any of us for that matter, have ever known. I knew eventually this day would come, and I am so, so grateful I got to spend 37 years with my grams. We took trips. I went to New York City with her after my eighth grade graduation. Caribbean cruises, where we lost Jackie and found her. <laughs> and I made several visits to her at the condo in Fort Lauderdale, throughout college and after. And for her 80th birthday, we got to go on an Alaskan cruise with her. I feel so fortunate, and I got to spend so much time with her, and that she got to meet my husband and my children, walk down the aisle at my wedding, visit me in the hospital, bring me hard salami sandwiches when my mom couldn't after I gave birth. <sighs> my grandfather passed away almost 30 years ago. And my grandma, despite losing her partner so young, never slowed down. She always kept in touch with everyone. She knew what every cousin, <sighs> nephew, grandchild, everyone was doing and their, what their families were up to. And she had so, so many close friends that she loved like family. She kept herself busy and she never complained, never. She put everyone before her and did everything and gave everything that she had to everyone that she loved. We used to go on regular shopping trips, back to school shopping or birthday shopping, and I'd be trying on an outfit or a pair of shoes and my grandma would say, well, do you like it? Should we buy it? And I'd look at the price and I'd say, well, I don't really need it. And she'd say, but do you like it? Will you wear it? And if my answer was yes, there was no more conversation. I was going to have it because that's just who she was. She enjoyed making the people around her happy. I always look forward to my phone calls with her. And as I got older, she'd always start with, I wasn't sure if this was a good time. I don't want to bother you. I know you're so busy. And I would always say, I am never too busy for you. Please, please call me whenever you want, because it was always a highlight of my day to hear her voice and catch up with her. The last two years had been hard on her, and COVID and isolation definitely took a toll on her, both physically and mentally. But I look back over the two years, and, we were, and when we were allowed to break her out of her facility, we were able to celebrate her 90th birthday with our family in my backyard, and even this year in Rosh Hashanah, none of us knew it would be our last holiday with her. She came and enjoyed her matzo ball soup and talked with all of us and watched my kids put on a performance because they're my kids, so of course there was some sort of show involved. I went through my phone and listened to old voicemails the day after she passed away that she had left me from 2018 to present. Most were short and, hi, sweetheart, it's grandma, call me back whenever you have time. I'll be at dinner and then home. But one from 2020, February of 2020 made me laugh because she said, call her back, she'd be home, other than when she's in the garage looking for her car keys, which she spent half of her life doing. Um, and through my tears, it actually made me laugh out loud because literally we looked for those car keys everywhere and couldn't find them and had to have her car towed back to Lexus because the battery was dead. She wasn't her full self then, but hearing her voice and her comment on her own forgetfulness just made me love her even more. And if I had known that Rosh Hashanah would be our last real time together, there's so much more I would have liked to say. But then I remember we had so much time together and we had so much, we had so much time together over the years and I feel grateful for every second I had with her, for the years she had in good health and the ability to live her life to the fullest. I hope I can look back on my life one day and live a life as full of love and happiness as she did. And before I pass it on to Andy, um, there's this poem that I had found that uh, I loved and it kind of, in my eyes, um, is how my grandma would want us to remember her, especially today. Um, Epitaph by Merritt Malloy. When I die, give what's left of me away to children and old men that wait to die. And if you need to cry, cry for your brother walking the street beside you. And when you need me, Put your arms around anyone and give them what you need to give to me. I want to leave you something, something better than words or sounds. Look for me in the people I've known or loved. And if you cannot give me away, at least let me live on in your eyes and not your mind. You can love me most by letting hands touch hands, by letting bodies touch bodies. 
and by letting go of children that need to be free. Love doesn't die. People do. So when that's all that's left to me is love. Give me away. I really didn't want to go first, and then Steph made me cry, and that backfired. <sighs> my grandma was a legend in my life. Some knew she was responsible for my entire wardrobe, including this suit. Uh, others knew about her third row center court Bulls tickets. I saw Michael Jordan from there with her. In fact, I watched the Bulls win their sixth championship, the shot from Times Square with my grandma when she took me to New York for her eighth grade graduation. We just got on a play in time. She was a legend to me for many other reasons. It felt like she was the first person to recognize all the best parts of me. She made me feel seen. Every phone call between my grandma and I ended with I love yous, and then she'd say, bye bye, honey. Those words uplifted me until the next time I would call. Our calls the past few years have been harder. It was the same conversation over and over, and more recently, her hearing aids weren't working, or she didn't know how to turn her TV off to hear me over her, uh, me on the phone over the TV. The last time I talked to her, I told her about some exciting things happening with work and what I'd been up to with my girlfriend. She said, as she always did, how happy she was to hear that and how she loves to receive good news from me. She was always the person I called first when I had good news. At the end of our conversation, she said, I love you so, so, so much, so much. I told her I loved her too, and she said bye-bye, honey, for one last time. Looking at my cousins, my brother, my aunt, my mom, I know that her legend lives on in all of us. So many of the best parts of us are from her. The love she showed everyone is reflected in all of us. Seeing the love that has surrounded us the past few days has been a great reminder that her legend endures with that love. As, uh, as many of you are aware, and Steph mentioned, uh, my grandfather, Norman, passed away about 30 years ago. Uh, and I bring that up uh, because of not just how it affected all of us, but how, how it affected my grandmother. Uh, I remember even when I was 10, 12, 15, 20, she would tell me, look, I'm never going to miss anything because I know Norman wouldn't want to be here. Um, and it just, it always showed me how, how much family meant and how much um, while he wasn't here anymore, um, she was going to do double the work uh, to make up for the fact that we only had one grandparent, uh, at least on that side of the family. And she wanted to be both, you know, a grandmother and a grandfather. Uh, when I was growing up, as most of you probably know, my grandmother never missed a game. Uh, while most people had their parents at every football game or baseball game, my grandmother was there in the front row um, at every one of my sporting events. Uh, no matter if I did well or bad, uh, she was always uh, so proud. Uh, she was always so proud of me. And I don't know if I always really understood that. Uh, you know, I'm always my biggest critic. And, you know, uh, it was always amazing having my grandmother in my corner. Uh, no matter what I said, um, you know, I, she, when I talked to my mom later on, she, she would talk to me about how, you know, my grandmother thought I could do no wrong. I go, well, <laughs> I have a long list of things I could tell her. Uh, but it, that, was, that was the thing about Lorraine. She always saw the good in people. Uh, there would be... Uh, somebody who you'd be having a, a disagreement with in the family or not in the family, and she would always uh, guide me through uh, how to handle those confrontations. Because, as I said, you know, she always saw the good in people. Uh, and she was also one of the most selfless people uh, I've ever met, and selfless to a fault. I know that every one of us has shopping stories with my grandmother. I'm going to share a little, a little one because it's kind of a funny one. Uh, we were walking through Nordstrom's, and I'm sure, as Andy would say, they knew her at Nordstrom's. Uh, the managers knew her. They would call her before the sales to make sure that uh, her grandkids would, would be well-dressed. Um, and we were there, and I'm walking through the young men's section. I see this Lacoste track jacket. I take a look at it. I look at the price tag, and I keep walking. There was no way I needed a Lacoste track jacket. Um, she goes, oh, that looks nice. Why don't you put it on? I go, Grandma, I do not need a Lacoste track jacket. Just, 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 just try it on. Humor me. Uh, so I put the track jacket on, and she goes, we're buying it. My grandma's like a $300 jacket. I do not need a $300 jacket. Just, we're buying it. I'm like, fine. 
we're going to get her, you a, cell, a new cell phone next. So that was part of the reason for the trip, is I was going to help her pick out a new phone. So we go to the AT&T store afterwards, and she picks out a 99 cent phone. And, and, I, and, I, and I say, Grandma, you don't need this. You, you can get this. This phone has more features. You'll be, I'll teach you how to use it all. She goes, no, I don't need it. I need the 99 cent phone. And here I am yelling at my grandmother in the middle of, a, in the, middle of the AT&T store to buy a phone for $200 after she spent $300 on a jacket I'll never wear, but she wouldn't buy herself a $300 cell phone uh, because that's just the kind of person that she was. You know, she would spend gladly on the people that she loved, but she had a hard time spending uh, any money on herself. Um, and even to, to this day, uh, she was she was like that. My my wife and I had a uh, a little water damage in our basement. I'd be getting phone calls from her every week asking me to pay for it. Grandma, it's fine. I have insurance. I don't need you to pay for my basement. Um, but that was just you know the kind of person that she was. She wanted to do everything for everybody. Um, you know, and and as Andy mentioned, you always had a supportive ear. Uh, always somebody who would listen to your problems and want to help. Um, and lastly, you know, over the last couple of years, as we all mentioned, you know, she's, uh, COVID had, had, had a way with her. Uh, but every conversation I had with her before Emily and I found out we were having twins was when she was going to get another grandkid. Uh, without, without a doubt, that was always mentioned. So, Grandma, don't worry, we're working on it. And, um, and one day, I remember when I called her and told her that we were having twins, uh, she was so excited. And my last few conversations with her were basically how all she would do is spend is look at the photographs of the boys and uh, I was so glad that she was able to meet them um, and you know for me to be able to have given her that last gift you have some more grandkids to meet um, and we as Stephanie mentioned Rosh Hashanah we were all together she got to see the boys and play with them uh, it was something that I'll never forget thanks Um, I didn't want to write anything down because I thought I'd have a hard time reading it. So I'm just going to kind of go off the top of my head. And I knew that everyone was going to say something uh, along the lines of shopping trips and vacations. Um, so I kind of wanted to just, you know, everyone also mentioned that she uh, saw the best in people. And uh, I would include that for myself when I didn't always know what I wanted to do. She didn't really care. She just wanted me to do whatever made me happy. Um, that included, you know, moving schools and not knowing where I wanted to go and then moving to California and supporting me there no matter what I wanted to do or what I did that she didn't understand, which, you know, no one understands what I do and that's great. But she didn't care. She just wanted to hear about everything that I did and she would ask me all the specifics, whether she had any idea what I was saying or not, she didn't care. It just sounded exciting because I was excited about it. And uh, that meant a lot when I didn't even know that anybody really believed in what I was doing. I knew that she always did. And, uh, you know, th the importance of everyone being together was something that she always valued. And that was, you know, that went down to the bringing all of us on vacation together all the time. Um, that's the first time I got to spend any real time with, you know, several of the people in the family that I didn't, you know, Mike and, and everybody. Just, she was just didn't care what it was. She just wanted everyone to be together and having a good time. And, uh, and we always did. She always made sure we did. And uh, I will value all of that time, you know, greatly. Yeah. My grandma Lorraine was a remarkable woman. As my longest living grandparent, I'm so grateful I could spend the last 32 years of my life with her. She was truly the most loving, kind, and generous woman, which I know everybody here already knows. Being the youngest of my family and the cousins, I tend to sometimes feel forgotten about. This point was proven once again as I was looking through old photos of hers the other night. While there are many pictures of Steph, Josh, Andy, and Robbie growing up, the camera seemed to disappear by the time I was born. <laughs> it's fine, I'm clearly over it. <sighs> but I was my grandmother's baby. She never let a moment go by without telling me how much she loved me and that I was her baby. She loved me fiercely and not once did I ever feel that I had missed out on any of her time or attention. As many have mentioned already, she always made sure to take all of us on our special shopping days, which would include lunch at the restaurant of our choosing and trips to all our favorite stores. These days were some of my favorite memories of my grandma. I remember my friends telling me how lucky I was that my grandma would spoil me with new clothes and shoes. It was never lost on me how fortunate I was. I cherish every piece of clothing 
every piece of jewelry she ever bought for me, but what I cherished most was the time we spent together. Not only was my grandma extremely kind and generous, but she was without a doubt the coolest person I knew. I want to share one memory of when she took me to my first Bulls game. I wasn't sure what to expect as I had never attended a sporting event with my grandma before. She pulled into the parking lot and proceeded to exit the line and drive towards the front of the United Center. She approached a parking spot that was blocked off with orange cones. Grandma, I said, you can't park here. This spot is reserved for someone. To which she turned to me and said, yeah, it's reserved for me. <laughs> a parking attendant waved to my grandma and began to remove the orange cone so she could park. I honestly couldn't believe what I was witnessing. We strolled through the stadium entrance doors, barely showing our tickets, because every person we passed seemed to know and greet my grandmother. She introduced me to many people that night, and I just remember being in complete awe of her. Everyone she came in contact with was enamored by her kindness and in turn treated her with the respect she deserved. That night I realized what a powerful force she was. I continued to be amazed by her cool factor as she scored me floor seats to a Black Eyed Peas concert at the United Center, as well as when she was pictured with the Stanley Cup way before I ever got a chance to grace its presence. I don't think I will ever reach that level of cool, but I will do, my I will do her proud and strive every day too. While I think back on our memories together with smiles and lots of laughter, I'm also saddened by the things I know she will miss out on in the future. I'm fortunate that she got to witness me graduate high school and college and even attended many highly exciting cross country meets in which I without a doubt finished nearly last, as well as many of my lacrosse games where I probably spent half the game on the bench. She didn't care. She came to cheer me on with a smile on her face and pride in her heart. She always said she knew grandpa would have been there, so she had to be there for the both of them. While well, I was only given a short two years with my grandpa Norman, the love she poured into me was more than enough for the both of them. I was the luckiest. Thank you to Stephanie and Josh, Jacqueline, Andy and Rob for sharing those beautiful words and memories. This past week, the Torah portion sheds light on the story of Sarah and Abraham. And in this famous scene, there are three angelic visitors who approach Abraham, as our story would tell us. But as we read further, it is clear that these angels were not there to greet Abraham regardless of how excited he was to greet them. They were there to greet Sarah, our matriarch. Their concern was for her. Their meal was cooked by her. Their message was for her. Today, we too are here gathered for a matriarch, a woman who, like Sarah, allowed others to come before herself always concerned about others' well-beings before her own, giving of herself for the betterment of the entire family. Lorraine Brotman grew up in Rogers Park, where she met and later married Norman, her high school sweetheart. Lorraine went to college in the city where she graduated, though she did attend Wisconsin for a little time. Norman was a year older and became an optometrist and they were married at 22 years old. Lorraine's parents of blessed memory, B and Jack, had a very large family and they lived in the same area with nearby buildings. And their home was often the meeting place and people always came to their house because of her grandmother, Molly, that's B's mother, lived with them. Molly was the glue and talked to everyone. And Lorraine took that mantle in her own life becoming the glue for her own family. In part because she inherited grandparents' place in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. While Lorraine and Norman went there, it became more and more of a home after he passed away, and Lorraine spent winters there. Florida was just the tip of the iceberg for the couple. They loved to travel. Cruises, Europe, China, and Israel. Lorraine was mostly at home with the family, but eventually she went into the real estate with her next door neighbor, Blanche. 
Nancy also became like a daughter to her. Lorraine and Norman raised both Marcy and Randy in Lincolnwood, but Lorraine eventually moved to Northbrook around 30 years ago. And then Marcy bought her mother's home when Lorraine went into independent living. And that became a home that is part of this family's now history. Amongst the many passions in life, Lorraine loved to volunteer at the Lincolnwood Library and reading to kids. And she did that until she moved to Northbrook. She was also, as we heard, a big sports fan, often third row center at Bulls games, special parking spot. And they also owned their own Blackhawks tickets and had a memorable picture with the Stanley Cup, which the family clearly remembers. But above all else, for her, it was family. She was hands-on and nurturing, warm and generous. Marcy shared that they did lots of family things together growing up, vacations, including trips to Wisconsin, sporting events, museums. All these were family activities, and she would have it no other way. She always helped them with homework, fond memories for everyone. Marcy recalls that mom also made her eat her peas, acting as the disciplinarian at times while dad was the softy. When I asked the family about her as a grandmother, the stories just came flowing as we heard today. And as we saw them all up here, we heard some of these words. Josh said she was the best, and that's the only way to describe her. She cared about all of her grandchildren. While they were in high school, she didn't miss an event or an activity. Josh's clothes were all purchased by his grandmother. And while she would spend much of the time as possible with each and every one of them. And she was also involved up until recently, and they spoke many, many times a week. And these were long and meaningful conversations. Andy said Lorraine was the first person he would call with good news. And of course, that memorable last shot of Michael Jordan in Times Square, which she made them run to the hotel so they could watch the post-game celebration. And Lorraine spoiled them so much that the Nordstrom sales manager actually had Andy's number because of what she would spend on them. <laughs> Stephanie reminisced about while in college in Maryland, instead of going on trips with her friends, she would sometimes just go down to Florida and spend time with her grandmother. They had alone time there, and she cherished that. And Lorraine proudly took the family, the whole family, on an Alaskan cruise. Lorraine, that everyone knew, was the most generous, the most giving person. Everyone else came first. And she filled in for the whole family. And if there was a gap, she just jumped in and she'd fill it. And COVID, well, difficult for her. She didn't really just want to sit on the sidelines. She even tried to help as we heard Josh with his condo. And like our biblical Sarah, Lorraine was all about family first. Her needs came after everyone else, and she loved that everyone else was happy. That is her legacy, and it's in all of you. Through the stories, through the actions, and through the memories. I'd like to leave the family with some words of blessings through Lorraine's life, to the great-grandchildren. Cherish the time you had with your great-grandmother. Remember her in the stories your parents will share and in the warmth they provide because they were taught from the very best. To Stephanie, Michael, Joshua, Emily, Jacqueline, Andy, and Rob, remember the generosity that it permeated through all that she did and that even the Nordstrom sales managers knew about your grandmother's generosity. And never let that value escape you all when it comes to your loved ones. Give to them as she would give to you. To Randy, remember how mom never stopped living life to its fullest. Even when losing Norman, she persevered, made many friends wherever she went, and enjoyed life as much as she could. To Marcy, allow your mother's ability to keep traditions alive and family close never escape you. Like mom, fill the gaps and allow for your family to continue to blossom. And to all of us, may we remember and see the world as Lorraine did, like a Michael Jordan's last shot. 
clear and focused on what is truly important in life. Be driven to take care of family and friendship, to be generous, provide love and compassion. May her memory forever be for a blessing and let us all say, In a moment, we'll head over to West Lawn Cemetery. I'll conclude my words with El Malay Rachamim. If you're able to, please rise. El Malay Rachamim, Shochen en Maromim. Hametze menucha nechona, tacha kanfe ashrina. Bimalot kirushim torim kezarakia mazirim. Et nishma lea badiakov shall halola ma. Began edentia menuchata. Ana bala rachami. Mastira besetter can afelola meem. Utsror bitsora haim. Et nishmata. Adonai nachlata. Betanua poshalom amishkava venomar amen. Exalt the compassionate God, grant infinite rest in your sheltering presence among the holy and pure. So the soul of Lorraine brought, who has gone to her eternal home. Merciful one, we ask that your, our loved one find perfect peace and your eternally brace. May her soul be bound up in the bond of life. May she rest in peace and let us all say. Friends, this concludes our service here in the chapel. The interment will take place immediately. The family plots at West Lawn Cemetery. Please note, the family is asked that memorial contributions be made to B'nai Tikva congregation. That information is on your folder. For those of you who wish to attend Shiva, uh, you may uh, contact uh, one of the uh, daughters, uh, they will pass the information on to you. Vaccinated and masked guests are the only ones who are welcome. For those of you who are going in procession with the family to the cemetery, please make sure you obtain a orange funeral safety sticker. The sticker should be placed in the front passenger side of your windshield. We would ask, also ask that you have your bright headlights and flashing hazard lights on at all times. For an additional measure of safety, our staff will be placing magnetic flags on many of the vehicles that are going to the cemetery. As we drive in procession today, I please ask you to drive as close as possible and as safety permits to the car in front of you, especially as we go through the intersections. I would ask you to please be very thoughtful about utilization of your cellular phones. I'm going to ask at this time that everyone please rise. We're going to escort Mrs. Brotman out. I'm going to ask the grandchildren to please come forward as pallbearers. Our service at present is concluded.